Hey guys, so I want to do something that I've never done before. I came to realize something. Every time I post a child who is in need of a little bit of support or in, in need of a sponsorship, then I post it on the Facebook and I never put them on the YouTube channel. But if I'm going to be the loudest voice I can for these children, I figure I better start doing it on the YouTube channel as well because I know that not everyone who watches the YouTube videos necessarily looks at the Facebook. So I'm not shouting as loud as I can for these children. And I feel it's evident because this is one, each sheet of paper is a child in need. This is one file. I'm flicking a few sheets at a time there. There must be around about, I think there's about 100 children inside this file in total. So this is one, as I say, we have many more files. Now, this one I'm focusing on a lot at the moment because the children in here start as young as two years old. And I've come to the conclusion after years here that getting the children assistance when they are young is the most vital thing and the, the, the best thing I can do. It's the best thing I can do to stop them from getting to the point where they have no one to care for them, stop them from getting to the point where they run away from, from labour or they run away to try and find money to pay for school fees themselves. Just as our street boys do. That's why Angel's Gate is filled with boys who all did that. They all ran from labour or they all went to the street to look for money so as they could pay for school or just to eat. So, so I'm going to try and find a format to do this. Of course, I've got the Advent Challenge coming up where I'll put a child on every single day and I'll try and find a format to do a YouTube video for this. But for now, I've got the file in my lap and I just want to randomly choose a child and tell you uh, about this child. So I chose him before I started recording, but this child is called Samuel. And Samuel is eight years old. And he is staying with his grandfather because his parents have passed away. We don't know why his parents have passed away, but when both die in this area, we tend to find it was HIV AIDS that did it. There are many grandparents caring for children here because the HIV AIDS skipped that generation a little. Not all of them, but many, because it was the other generation who were infected because it was the older generation weren't being as sexually promiscuous with, with those who were carrying the epidemic around the place. So it's that next generation that got caught out the most, unfortunately. So I can't say for sure, but if when both die, I dare say more than likely it had something to do with it. Now, he also has four other grandchildren in his care, so he's struggling. And he's a traditional guy. He has a small plot of land where he's growing his maize and beans to be able to feed his five children that he has in his care. With that, of course, they are struggling to provide any form of access to education. Now, primary school is where they're trying to get him for now, and primary school is free in Tanzania. But what that means is the government pay for the staff and the teacher, but then you have to come up with money for everything else. Your uniform, you can't attend without a uniform, which is a silly rule, but it's a rule they have enforced. Uh, they Children cannot attend without paying levies for water bills and security and furniture, etc. They can't attend unless they pay the money for the school meals. Very important part of it is school meals and a lot of children don't go to primary school because of that. They can't afford to provide the contribution required for a school meal. For those who can afford it, it's sometimes the only meal they're getting. So it depends which way the family decides to go with it. Some of the families will go for paying the school and then at least they know the child's going to have that meal during school hours and then even if they're not going to eat at night time. Meals at school, the same thing every day. Maize and beans. Maize in its whole form, boiled with beans. That's the only thing they get at school every day. So Samuel needs some help. His grandfather needs some help to get him into primary school. And I'm just making this video to see what sort of response I get when I do it this way. I always say in my Facebook posts that supporting a child like this is actually not a huge ask of someone from the Western society. It is for some persons in the West, don't get me wrong, but for most it's not. Now, to the way I always word it is a cup of coffee every week in a coffee shop or a coffee shop in England, Europe, from what I've seen, I dare say America's the same. A cup of coffee is going to pay to give a child like Samuel access to full-time education, to 
full time, full access to medical care as and when he needs it. Imperative in an area where we have so much typhoid and amoebiasis and malaria, etc. And also uh, access to amenities. Now that includes things like a solar torch, so you can learn to read. His fa his grandfather has a wooden stick house, so they don't have electricity. So a solar lamp allows him to do homework at night time, and when you're on the equator and it's dark every single day of the year around about 6.30, 7 o'clock, that's required. And the other thing is a mattress. So Samuel has never slept on a mattress and likely never will until he's old enough to possibly find some way to support himself, but possibly never will unless he gets into school, because otherwise he'll be forced into labour, which is a very impoverished way of living, which is less than a dollar a day. And in which instance a mattress is too much money for someone to buy. So things like mattresses are provided within that sponsorship as well because everyone knows if you sleep on a concrete floor every night you're not going to perform as well in school as what you could. So, so that is Samuel and I just thought I'd try this out like I say and I'll find a new format to do it but for now I've got my camera I'm at the desk and I've got the file and I thought I'd just record this and put it online and see what the response is like because I get the feeling as I say I'm not being the loudest voice I can for these children and it shows that I need to do something new because I've got so many children this file is full of children from the age of 2 to 10 now for those who are in immediate danger of not having food etc we get them into the food program as best we can and by the grace of God we always seem to be able to manage to provide that food hopefully as our farm picks up again next year and we have better luck with the, uh, the weather then we'll be able to do that much more easily but when it comes to long term like school etc there's nothing uh, there's no funding for us to do that other than individual sponsors and it's successful we've got over 500 children who have access to education have access to medical care and ultimately have a decent start at life purely because all around the world at different times someone sitting uh, reading a post on Facebook or who watched a video of ours was moved enough to click a button and that click of a button really does have a huge impact here and if you're unsure of the impact it can have just look at the stories of the street boys that we've got who all couldn't access school and that's why they went to the street because some of them had families, but the families were so poor they couldn't give them access to school. So they said, well, why am I here? Why don't I just go off and find my own way? And unfortunately, they found what they found. But this is why we're starting, and I'm focusing a lot of my energy on the youngest children possible. The younger I can help the children, the better. So Wadi is on our staff. She is now 25 years old, and her family is from drastic poverty. When she was six, a Canadian lady sponsored her with an, another charity somewhere. And now Zawadi, Zawadi is qualified in community development and working to assist children who were in the same position as what she was. So it does work. It really does make a difference. So this is Samuel and I'm just seeing what the response will be like. And also remember, we're doing a new thing for Christmas this year where you can sponsor a child for a loved one and get a beautiful gift certificate. Uh, to hand over to say, yeah, I didn't buy you a new sweater, but I did do this, which means every day for the next year you can sit down together and smile and say, well, everlasting Christmas magic, you know, all year round, which is how I see it, which is why I started that project. So, anyway, much love, guys.